afternoon. Afternoon. Quite a pony you got there. Yeah, she's a runner. Indian? Modoc. Oh, they breed them right up there. Except for one thing. Oh, what's that? They don't know how to back up. So if you'll just pull that crockhead off this bridge. Well, now, I'd gladly do that for you, boy, except for one thing. What's that? This one's a Modoc, too. Hot, ain't it? Yeah, you can really raise a sweat this time of year. That's a fine-looking blowpipe you got there. Mexican. That a fact. Got the bite to blow the head off a grizzly. That is, if you get to it in time. Don't need to. Just think it. Eyeball or button I want to pop and pow. English. Do tell. Core an apple at a half a mile. On the tree or falling? On horseback. A hurricane. Where's the Swenson property? These three sections. Our track goes by it here. You served a notice? Swenson sample worth. The papers went out this morning. Mr. Barclay will see you in his car now, Mr. Crown, sir. At your convenience. How many of your people have you called in? About 200. Keep them chained. I mean that, Hook. Bring them in, you said. 200 hired guns. If and when needed. They'll mop up these hayseeds in one day. And we'll be ripped to shreds. Nothing like brave little men fighting a railroad to wind up public opinion. Tell Mr. Barclay, uh, two minutes. Yes, sir. How are you going to stop it? Stop it? A fight? I can't. But maybe he will. Barclay? Sure. Like his father did six years ago. His father's dead. They're his sons. They still have his horns. Do they, Hook? Are you so sure? Or is it just the name? May I offer you a bite of lunch? I usually don't. No, not really. That's the mark of an ambitious man. Also leads to an ulcer. Eat lunch, crowns, good for your health. Well, what should we drink to? To a new day. No. No, I think I have a better one. To the man who won it. Your lord and master, Hannibal Jordan. Who, with one quick tug of his fat, grubby little fist, makes paupers out of 2,000 men. Think of it, Crown. The genius. 2,000 farmers living on land they settled, homesteaded, worked. Railroad land. Sold to them. Leased. 
Sold to them ten years ago at auction, and you know it. You took their case to the legislature. You got your bill out of committee and onto the floor and passed. And vetoed. It was illegal. The governor killed it. Jordan killed it. And now you're preparing a move to rescind. I am. So meanwhile, to peace. You know, Crown, over that hill there, there's a town. Land worked and tilled. Olives, figs, grapes, cattle. That's an awful lot to ask a man to give up. Peacefully. That's what you're going to tell the men? I, Crown? No, oh, you're the one they're going to turn to. You or your brothers, just like they did your father. You'd like to know how I'm going to advise them, is that it? Well, let's say I'd like you to know what will happen if you advise them improperly. How many was it last time, Barclay? Ten dead? Twelve? Not even for openers. The day of the spike and iron, is that it? No man can beat it. Well, there's one who's sure trying. Oh, not a chance. Fifty. One hundred. Sometimes, maybe for a while. But sooner or later, like all men, they die. And all they leave behind is dust. That from a man who doesn't eat lunch. been chasing the wind, boy, hollering at the breeze. <laughs> hey, you're getting fat. What are you talking about? A mere pound. <laughs> How's Frisco? Cold. Well, if it's heat you want, we got it here. The railroad is really bringing them in. They must have turned up every rock in the hills. Now, come on, boy, get your mouth outside.
I planted those flowers. So? You were tramping on them. I saw you. Who are you? I was about to ask you the same thing. I don't have to tell you that. No, ma'am, I guess you don't. Audra Barkley. Then? He was my father. Well, I am sorry. What are you doing here, anyway? Who are you? You're not from around. I was on my way to your place, looking for work. I got fouled up in the woods there and ran across this grave. It's not a likely place for a grave. He died here. It's where they shot him. A thousand people came from the valley to bury him. He was that kind of man. I know. What do you mean, you know? I mean, I know what it's like to be without your father. You tell me the way, I'll uh, be off. There's a trail about ten yards off in the woods. It'll take you into the road leading up to the ranch. Hey, see my brother Nick. He runs the hiring. I'll do that. San Francisco. Oh. <laughs> well, maybe you want heat. We got, we it, got here. it here. I know. <laughs> si, senor, we got it here. Jared. <laughs> Hi there, doctor. Or is it lawyer this week? No, by heaven, Nick, I think it's poet. He's got the look in his eye. <laughs> What's all this about, all these uh, wagons? I got notice from the railroad this morning. Pay your vacate. Who do you mean they? Swenson, Sampleworth. They're inside. By heaven, you're getting younger every day. Shh, your mama, she's sleeping. You look fine, Mr. Barkley, just fine. How is Frisco? Uh, balmy, Silas, fair and balmy. <laughs> Jared. Sig, how are you? Frank, Abe? Jared. Uh, ain't you something to see, though? <laughs> Yeah, you really gave it to him up there, huh? Sure he did. I told you that. Hey, these papers, they're bluffing, huh? $25 an acre for my own land. Pay or they sell it out from under me. <laughs> Who's that railroad think they're trying to bluff? By midnight tonight, huh? Yeah, ain't that the note of it, though? Frank, yours? Till late in the morning. Noon tomorrow. I was gonna feed this thing to my goat, but I figured, hey, I ought to show it to you first for a laugh. So that's how they're hitting him, one at a time. Yeah, they think they can. What do you mean, hitting us, Jared? I thought you knew. What? You saw the governor. You said you were going to meet with him? I saw the governor. Oh, my God, no. He vetoed it. I'm sorry. Well, it ain't legal. It can't be. Not by any moral standard, I know. But it's legal. $25 an acre? How am I ever going to raise that much money? How many men do you have under hire? Why? 35, 40? We can match that, Sig, in one hour. For what, Frank? Fight him, Jared. He's right. Just like we did before with your daddy. And who do you think you'd be fighting, Sig? A half dozen mud hogs off a flat car? No. Go into town and take a look. It's crawling with them. They've hired themselves an army. You ask us to give into it, Jared? Is that what you're asking? Give up all we own? My house, my field? All this boy's buried by that house. I give that up? Frank, I think you know me better than that. Nick, what time's that courthouse open in the morning? How would I know? Nine. All right. 
Now, first thing in the morning, I'll initiate injunctive procedures. That'll give us time to weigh our moves. Now, don't worry, boys. Nothing's gonna happen. Not tonight, anyway. Let's talk tomorrow. Frank, can you be here? Yeah. If you say so. Good. Suppose we, uh, suppose we make it at this time, 6 o'clock. Abe? All right, Jared. See? Yeah. Now, let's have a drink before you go. Drink? No, I got a wetter field down. Thatcher and Schmidt. Maybe I can bring them in. They're good men. Frank, suppose you talk to them. Drink? Drink? Yeah. Whiskey or scotch? Well, it's always been scotch. Well, now, I wasn't sure what other taste you might have changed. Whatever that's supposed to mean. Injunctive procedures. Who do you think you're kidding? There's a court around here the railroad doesn't own. It's fight or nothing. Well, that's fine, Nick. That's just great. You go ahead. Go on it, tear. That's the way you've always done it. Well, those tactics may work in a barroom brawl, but they won't work here. This is the state you're swinging on, boy, or maybe you think you're up to it. Now, Eugene, you tell him. Well, there's right to what both of you say. I don't know. I just got to think about it. That's right, kid. You go ahead and think. You think while the barn's burning down. Now, just a minute. Jared. Jared, darling, how nice to see Hello, you. Hello, Mother. I'm ashamed of myself. I should get down to visit you. Oh, you're putting on weight. Well, Nick, dear that. Nick, must you shout at the top of your lungs when I'm trying to take my afternoon nap? Now, where's Audra? She knows enough to be in before dark. Jared, I do wish you'd speak to her. I'm afraid she has her father's flair for rebellion. Oh. Kindly see to your visitor. I'll enjoy your company at dinner. Something for you? Mr. Barkley, if you know where I can find him. Take your choice. Well, I was told Nick does the hiring. Of what? Well, Lion Boss, Haywaddy, Asher, Cowprod, Jingler. You name it, I've done her. What's your name? Heath. I was on that train this afternoon. Quite a race. No contest. Not the way those cabbage stacks come off a turn. Where are you from? West of the Divide. How west? Pretty much all over. Last place you worked? Corning. Sign him on, Nick. To what? We're full. Oh, well, he did me a little favor this afternoon. Sign him on. Now, take your gear over to the bunkhouse, see McNally. Tell him to sign you on. Let's hear it. Well, you just name the tune and I'll try to hum it. Corning. Nice town. Last place you worked? That's right. That's a hundred miles from here. So? You usually travel a hundred miles between jobs with a dozen likely spreads on the way, huh? I asked you a question, boy. All right, you're no more a trail hand on the Modoc. All right, let's hear it, boy. The truth. What are you doing here? <laughs> 
Sends me anywhere. Who then? Who are you? I want to hear. I said, who are you? Your father's bastard son. in a stream and near killed by a train. Now, this one's gonna be peaceful, you hear? So this is what it is. Well, I wondered. Well, the old stud himself. Boy, howdy, don't he look proper. You know, I bet they buried him in those clothes with his buttons all shine and his hair all spittin' slickered and a rose in his teeth, and the honeybees buzzing. Oh, well, now that's all. Nick, I'll bet a band played and there was singing and wailing and ever so good a time, and some parson reading. But they buried my mama. But it weren't in refinement, and no thousand people weeped over her grave. But in a potter's field, like she was nothing, human or flesh, the night I was born, she was alone, tent, in a rotten rat hole of a mining camp up to Stanislaus. And the rain beat down and turned the straw to mud. Do you know what she was? She was warm and gentle. And left to her own when her husband got liquored up and drowned in some stinking creek. Until he came. How long ago was this? Twenty-four years. Where? In a mining camp. You told us that. What mining camp? Strawberry. Now, come on, you know there was a lot of men in those camps. You know the kind of women... Nick! There was only one of my mother. Just the simple, sweet, innocent little... What my brother is clumsily trying to determine is when you came to here... A month ago. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. What happened a month ago? My mother died. Confessions from a deathbed. Nick, that'll be enough! Well? up on the Klamath. They called for me, said she was sick, she was dying. She never talked about it, who my father was, not in all these years. But it was something she wanted me to know, something she couldn't take to her grave. There was a Bible in a box, told me to get it. He said, turn to the back, to the last page. I started to, and this fell out. I picked it up, and I read it. And I looked at her, and 
she was gone. This it? All of it? It's one piece of paper. He was my father. All right, boy. You don't believe me. Get his horse, Eugene. You're not dumping me the way he dumped her. Keep your voice down! You put together a very touching story. Not convincing, touching. However, considering whom it might hurt, even though it is a lie, I'm willing to pay. 300, 400, what'll you take? What I'm entitled to. A name, a heritage, a part of it all. What's mine? All right, boy, now you listen to me. I want you out of this house, off this place, and out of this valley. And know this. If I ever lay eyes on you again, I'm going to finish what I started tonight. But you're lucky you're not dead, you little fool. What were you doing out there? Well? Nobody talks to me like that. Not ever. No? No. Try them. I heard my brothers talking about it. What was in town, I wanted to see. I don't believe them. Sit down. Rough one, aren't you? Crossed a few hills. It's what I've always wanted to do. See places like you have. Do what I want, no matter whatever. I'm still. My brother Nick. He takes nothing from anyone. You're telling me. That's how I'd like to be. My father was like that. <laughs> My mother thinks I'm shameless. Jared says I'm spoiled. He understands. You're like me. Some guy really put his fingernails into you. Get some soap to that when you get home, you hear? Is that where you're taking me? Home? Yeah, I think we've both had ours for the night. Have we? I guess you know where you go. Alone. In a room. The man. It's the first time. And there's the first time for everything, isn't there? To run. To talk. To love. To test your brother. Isn't that what you're doing? Liar! Liar! I'll say one thing for that old bear. He bred them wild. All of it, everything you told them, lies. Well, I don't fancy his breeding, miss, and it's no pride I got in him for a daddy. But it's a proud name, and it's mine. And I'm gonna wear it, and people, boy, howdy, they're gonna look up to me, just like your brothers. 
And everything that's Barkley, I'm gonna be too. I told you, man. Oh, boy, this is work for men. I'll let you explain to your family, Miss Barkley. They can explain to me. We're all right from here, Sheriff. Thank you. Yeah, you're new at the Barclays, aren't you? We saw me right out. He came after. So you said, Miss. What's your name? Heath. Heath what? That's Swinson's place. and torches, hollering out like wolves. And I just stood there aside and watched them do it. Well, not my place. And hanged, I'll be after paying for what I own. I got a paper here that says I have to do just that. By 8 o'clock in the morning, or have my place took out from under me. Well, I ain't. You hear? I ain't! Who stands with me? No one stands with you, Frank. I'm sorry. But legally, after tomorrow, the land's no longer yours. Nick. Jared, Eugene, listen. Six years ago, your daddy and mine fought and died for this because your daddy said it was right to fight. And what did it gain you? Any one of you. Your father and yours. Ten others dead. Six years of false hope. I bow to no man in my regard for Tom Barkley. But he was only a man. He couldn't fight a giant and win. Any more than can you. Or you. Or any man. So worship him. Pray for him. But follow him. You follow a dead man to his grave. Is that true? What he said? Your daddy gave us nothing? No way to fight? Never did.
Harry, I've known you most of my life and respected you. Enough to be honest. Any man that comes to try to take that farm, he's going to be killed. Sorry to hear that, because I'm going to be with him. He was an imperfect man, my husband. And in so many ways, that could hurt him. But he never destroyed, only built and gave life. For he knew that what he brought was a changing way. A revolution of its own that said, you are a free man. No one, not Railroad, nor Jordan, nor Thomas Barclay can own you. And he knew it was something you won only with courage, pride, and leadership. That's what he tried to instill in his son. If you hadn't ridden away tonight, you would have seen that he accomplished that. It's not a battle that can be won in a day, a year, or even ten. And then one day he made a terrible, wretched mistake. He died. Before anyone really understood. And so, if you were my son, I would say to you, be proud. Because any son of my husband has a right to be proud. Live as he would live, fight as he would fight, and no one, no one can deny you his birthright. That's what I would say to you. If you were my son. I tried to run for cover, but these claws were ripping right into my back, and the teeth were hitting my neck. Now, I've been up against some cats before. How'd you get out? Her husband came home. <laughs> what time is it? Ten minutes to eight. Yeah. Jared. Nick. Kids. In the cellar. Get with them.
That's far enough, Harry. At 8 a.m., by order of the governor of the state of California... We know what it says, Harry. The power vested in me as sheriff of this county... We know what it says. Frank, these people have been empowered as agents of the Coastal and Western to take possession of your property. I'll be dead first. Now, Frank, you listen. All of you, listen. These men have been duly sworn and deputized. And everyone with the right to do as they see fit if they're defied. Frank, you've got families. And that must mean something you think of your people. In the name of God, Jared. Nick. No way! Jared, tell him! Get out of this, Harry. You men are asking to be killed. You're fighting for something you haven't a chance of winning. The courthouse opens at 9. Will you wait? I was under the impression, Nicholas, that food is not eaten until grace... Lest these... Further, that such is not spoken until the entire family has assembled. 
Well, now that does raise a point. None that was not discussed quite thoroughly and well into last night, as I recall. Wait a minute. That story of his, do you really want it taken apart? I'll get him. Sit down. Nicholas, please, your voice. I can take that story of his apart piece by piece. Tell him. Well, just what I said. Silas, we seem to be shy of Lemon. Would you please? Yes, ma'am. Just like that, we pick up a brother, right? Is that what you're trying to tell me? Not quite just like that. Well, if that boy's a Barkley, he has a job to learn. And I'm going to make sure he knows what it is. That little war at Samples Farm, that wasn't a war. That was a pea shoot compared to what Crown can pull off down here. And I'll tell you something. I'll give Crown just six weeks to nurse his wounds. That's a billion-dollar haul he can make out there. And he's not going to blow it over 20 dead men. And the rest of it, water to bring down out of the hills. And I can think of a few that would like to stop that. This valley is gold. And every son of a jackal's going to put his filthy mitts in it and try to grab it. Hoodlums pouring out of Frisco like locusts. And out of the gold fields, red-eyed, washed-out losers, hot to tear the world apart for their luck and crops, and lumber, and feed, and transportation, and roads to keep open. And let's make one thing very clear. This is a working ranch, and he pulls his weight. And that means up in the morning, every morning with the rest of the crowd at 5 o'clock and sweat. Just let him come to me just one time with a dry shirt on his back. Got a section of fence out and a patch of mesquite to clear that's just begging for fire. And that bridge has got to be fixed before my Modoc breaks a leg, which I don't cotton to have it. Where the devil you been? You start with the bridge or the mesquite. Take your choice. Thank thee for thy blessings, for the food on this table, and for thy boundless love.
flank those cattle. Barrett, take up the drag. Let's go. Today, Barrett. You got a horse. Get back to that herd. I gave you an order. I take my orders from Barclays, not from a... Not from what? Not from what, Barrett? You hop on that herd or you're trapping the flats. <laughs> that brand. He's romping yarn. That B don't stand for Barkley. Not in your hide. You're through. Pick up your pay and get out. Anybody else feel like looking for work? I swear you're the only man I know who'd step out of a bath and look like he was just dragged by a horse. It might do you some good to eat a little dust once in a while. Uh, I'm a lawyer, remember? I only eat crow. Yeah, huh? It's a herd all in. <clears throat> well, don't tell me I'm here too late to help. Help? Great. Stackyard, we need a man. I thought you had a full crew. I got it. Down one, I fired a man. And I hired him back. Hey, Berber, you go out there and tell him to take it easy with those fires. I don't count to have any stack piles going up, huh? What happened, Pete? Gave an order. He didn't obey it fast enough to suit me. Handle him. I handled him. Give him the sack. Seemed to be the way. You got a job for a man to do, and he doesn't do it, you get him to do it. That's handling him. Now you go out and tell Mac to put a double guard in that hole tonight. That herd's restless. Nick. Yeah. That was a mistake you just made. Oh, now, what are you talking about? You were wrong. Oh, come on. Wrong, Nick. I've got 3,000 head of cattle, 550 miles to drive in, 24 days, with 40 hands that know which end of the cow to prod, and not just our cows, Jared, but Carr to Coven, Royce, and Fries, still biting their nails because they had to throw their cattle in with us. Nobody gets fired. Nick, you chopped his legs off right at the knees. I'd have done it to you, and you'd have done it to me. It's not the same. We're all Barclays, aren't we? We were born to the name, Nick. That gives us immunity. I've got 24 days, Pappy. So know this, that herd comes first. I can't hardly work flank when I've been told to pick up my pay. <laughs> so old Nick, he bursts. He says, pick up your pay, he says.
call. Yo? Nick wants two more men to ride guard on that herd tonight. Rodale? Chad? I'll be taking it. With Barrett. Whose thought is that? Mine. Well, I've had me a day. I expect I'll pass. McCall. Yeah? Get the men outside. All right, everybody. Move it. You're gonna ride guard on that herd tonight. If I have to carry you out. I have had it with you, boy. Now, you can diddle them all you want up there in that high house, but to me, you're trash. Up out of that dirt, just like Lillard and Brown and Shad or me, or no better. You're sightless to be given orders. I ain't taking no bossin' from a dead man's dirt.
going on here? Barrett's in there. Somebody. Somebody get this man a blanket. I don't believe it. Who is he? Do you know him? You people, you three. Get this man out of the dirt. Your room is a disgrace. Oh, he's the most fabulous thing I've ever seen. A general. Nick says he practically won the and war by himself. change your clothes before you come to dinner. So you were with 104th at Benton's Crossing. Six days. Pinned down for six days in that lousy swamp with nothing to eat but bark and moss. But you held that swamp until you broke through. You held it so that I could break through. An act of supreme heroism. <clears throat> oh, Mother. Mother, this is General Wallet. Mrs. Barkley. My son has admired you for years. You've justified your reputation. Oh, hardly, madam. I was just passing south and uh, trespassed quite uninvited to gain my bearings. The rest, coincidence. The mark I suspect of most heroics. I suspect otherwise. You're staying the night, of course. Well, I, I hardly... My room. Silence! I'll tell him. I'll bunk to the guest room. Excuse me, I must see to dinner. I, uh... I assume you'll be dining with us. Well, uh, the last I heard of you, General, you were on the frontier. Six years. What brings you west? To California? Still with the Army? Forever the Army. Hmm. Well, you have me more than intrigued, sir. Well, then I apologize, because there is nothing as rude as to intrigue and then be forced to remain silent. My horse never quartered so well, I'm sure, has an injury to his shin. You mind if I have a look at him before? Oh, yes, of course. I'll uh, see the wine. Oh, Brianna, 55. 55, really? That's not hospitality, that's homage. <laughs> Quite a guy. Oh, he could sure raise Ned with the brass. <laughs> but he could win battles and men. Better than any man I ever met. Um, what happened out there today? Well, it's you and me on this drive. I got nobody else. The men don't know the country. I've only walked it once. I'm going to need your head. We'll bury the thing, all right? All right, Nick. That horse. I've seen it before. Wallen's horse? The last two weeks since I've been here. Oh, now, how could you? I... You heard him say he was just passing through. From where? None of your business. Or mine. So bad? No, sir. Reb? Four years with Johnston. Pioneer Ridge? You bet. <laughs> you boys are really something. It's the only time I ever took a ball in the back of my chest running away from musket fire. <laughs> <laughs> How'd you get that? Private? It ain't private. Oh. This mongrel Heath rides in here about two weeks ago. Heath? Heath Barkley? Barkley? He's no Barkley. More than I am. Old man whelped him in a mining town. Yeah, he started in giving orders like he owned a mint. Yeah. Yeah, he did, yeah. I thought uh, Nick ran things. Nick, yeah. He's fine. Squashed him like a boot heel on a tater bug. Oh, Nick, he knows. First time there's a duster, I'll make a bet. 
Heath makes tracks. <laughs> <laughs> he gave you what for? Oh, yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Wait a minute. This man was at Pioneer Ridge. He gave what he got. Yeah, that's right. What about the rest of you, sir? The war, I mean. Any of you in it? Bull Run. I make that most. Sup, old Spock here. Still trying to hook us that that Mexican coyote shoot back in the 40s was a fight. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a fight. It was, and I ain't forgot what I know. What do you know, Spock? How to take a yaki with my bare hand. Or blow a bridge, or go to town. You sound like you miss it. Man miss anything he does well. I know what you did. Peppered tails. <laughs> <laughs> What about you? Ordnance. Telegrapher. Artillery. Coherne mortars? Coherns. Dahlgren. Anybody here know how to take out a train? Yeah. What do you use? Blasting powder and coffee gun. What if you got no powder? Log jammer on a turn. Put some ice on that. It'll cut the pain. Night, General. Good night, sir. Thank you, sir. We'll bed down here at the Kern River for a day, and then up over these mountains, and it's home free to San Diego. Those mountains, quite a climb. There's a slight grade for about 10 miles or so, but nothing cattle can't take. Water? Prettiest lake you ever saw right up here on top. I like it. It's good. I, I like it a lot. In other words, you want out, right, Sam? Well, Jared, I didn't say that. Uh, we went all through this two months ago. We told you then the Army had offered $15 a head more than the Kansas City price for all the steel we could deliver to San Diego. We talked to you, Sam. You and all the others said you wanted in. Royce and Carr. And fries. In this morning, penned and tallied. I lost that herd, Jared. Be over my dead body. Run him in. McCall, you ride gate horse, and Heath, run Sam's herd in. Well, this ace is over. Let's howl at the wind. Nick, that, um, that lake there at the top, greatest coffee water you ever drank. It's not a lake. What? What do you mean it's not a lake? It's a runoff. Well, I was there. That was spring, Nick. This is August. It's high desert country. Well, there's not a particle of water in those hills, not for 100 miles. Your lake, Nick, is nothing but barrel cactus and sage. East. Would you excuse us, gentlemen? I sense the conversation's about to become masculine. I don't mind. Audra, would you get my sewing basket? There seems to be a button missing at the top of your dress. Yes, and east along the base of these hills. Well, that's all desert. You can't go over the mountains. You got to go around them through Mint Canyon. There's water there. It's longer, but then you can make up the time. Oh. I thought you knew this territory. Well, not this territory. Surely some of your men. None of my men have been south of Fresno. I think what my brother is subtly trying to suggest is that since you're traveling south yourself in the morning... that I go along with him? Oh, no, I'm sorry, gentlemen. I'd be nothing but a nuisance. Well, that's hardly the word, General. Well, if you can tolerate a man who doesn't know a drag from a flank, done. Good, wonderful. I'll get in touch with McCall and have him set you up for tomorrow morning. It's going to be lonely here the next few weeks. You and Nick on the drive, and Jared back to San Francisco, Eugene off to college. And Audra will. Whoever knows where Audra is. Yes, ma'am. Oh, now we're going to have to do something about that. I've been many things to many people, but never ma'am. What's wrong, Heath? Nothing. Oh, no, no, not that, not to me. Trouble with the men? I can handle the men. Heath, you don't have to prove anything to anybody. 
You proved who and what you are two weeks ago in that fight against Coastal and Western. Now, how many men did they have? 60, 80 hired gunmen against a handful of farmers and my sons. You fought with them, and we won. That horse. What are you talking about? That horse was there. Mullen's horse? At Sample's place with those hired guns. Are you sure? You don't forget a horse like that. Have you told Nick? No, Nick wouldn't believe it. He thinks while it's a saint. And you can't prove otherwise? No. Nor can I. Oh, take care, Heath. Take care. You're late, friend. General. In my country, when a man is no longer in the army, he's no longer a general. General. You have them? Of course. How many? Thirty. Henry's. That's what I could get. I want Winchester's. And so I would like to be president. It's impossible. So it's impossible. General, I'll talk to my people. Tell them I want 40, not 30. 40? You have so many men as 40? I'll have them. Against the Arikaras, you had 200. All dead. When are the 40? When you have the Winchesters. They'll be there for you at the Kern. With all the rest of it? Of course. Something more? I want you to kill a man. <laughs> days. That's good. Feels good, Nick. Hey, Heath. Heath, don't unsaddle yet. I want you to...
My back. My back. Don't shoot. Lillard, Shad, up here. He was helpless. Helpless? Except for what he could tell. Every snake has two fangs. Remember that. bullet from a drunken yaki. Not a lousy bullet, Nick. It's in the bone. Well, there's doctors in Bakersfield. You'll be there by morning. Well, it's, it's all yours, Heath. I won't forget that, Nick. No, no. Nick, we'll see each other again. Dib. Let's get out of here, huh? Take a circle, will you, Mac? Close them in. Yeah. I'll lay out a route. You'll want to leave early in the morning. We're not leaving in the morning. I beg your pardon. Think you will stay over another day? What for? Scout that lake up that grade on top of those mountains. I believe I told you that lake is. I know what you said. There's no water. Kind of believe there is. Why would I lie? Well, maybe to make yourself necessary. To whom? To the men. In case anything happened to Nick. <laughs> well, you're a man. That's a fact. <coughs> What do you think you're going to do here? I don't roast you, boy! Yeah. You the fellow likes fires, I recall. I was only funning. I look Chad. Chad. Will I ever give it to you, boy? A hundred yards to make the river. Ah! Drop it, Chad. Put it down. Put it down. Well, you two fellas got all that energy. Let's just ride guard tonight. We rode guard last night, four hours. I'm not talking about four hours, Barrett. I'm talking about eight. All night? You got one hour to get your dinners and get back to that herd. Anybody else feel like extra detail? Let me know. Well, that rips it. I have had it up to here. You understand that? Who goes with me? Billy? Spock. Shad? What are you? Pack a stock for him to beller and prod at? Him? You ain't had enough, Brown, huh? You want more? Where do you want them to go, Baron? Well, I ain't staying with this. There are other spreads. Eight or ten dollars a month. How much do you make? Twelve. Top pay, unless... Unless what? Unless you're a man who can take out a train. What are you talking about? More money in a month than you make in a year. Well, what? Man knows how to run a mortar, telegraph key, gut a town, blow a bridge. Dinner? 
Suddenly, I found that I have developed an appetite. Downstream, pick them up. Spock, saddle up. We're gonna scout this ridge for water. Okay, let's move it. Why don't you say I'm golden? Yeah. Now, you heard him move out. Oh, we're gonna move out, all right. We'll move out. You know all these things, right? Well, what do we got here? <laughs> what did he offer you, Shad? <laughs> what they fought through four years of war to find. That's right. 
No ordinary man satisfied to return to their farms and their ranches, their jobs, no, and live a small, insignificant life. You hear that? Dissatisfied man Barclay, yeah. yearning and searching for a place. A place of their own, and rightfully so, because they had the courage to seek it. That's right. right. You're right. You're right. And you're going to give it to them? Yes, he is. Where? Diaz in Mexico. Right. Mexico. Yes. All right. So that's what it's all about. Hired assassins. Volunteers. Volunteers. Out to fight for a Mexican terrorist. No. Patriot. Patriot. And for what? Half we get. That's yeah. half. Yeah. 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 Oh, no, no. More than land, boy. A province, my province, yours and mine. Yeah. All that you've ever dreamed of owning for yourself, not working for somebody else, and what's more, 100 square miles of water and green. <laughs> and how much of that do you think you're going to see? Oh, Listen, we have it. all we want to hear from you. That's right. All of it. A six by three foot grave. Oh, no. You follow him and you go to your death. Oh, That's God. all the value oh, you are to him. Oh, no? Oh, Ask him why he was at Sample's no. place with the Coastal and Western oh, Railroad. Oh, fought against us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He fought against us. Oh, yeah, yeah. The general fought against us. The general fought against us. Oh, no. He never fought against us. Ask him why Nick was shot. Because he ordered it. Ordered it? Knowing you'd never break away from Nick as long as he was here. Do you hear that, boys? I saved men from the swamps and the fires to have them shot. <laughs> <laughs> I offer you freedom. I offer you manhood. I offer you everything that a courageous man can achieve. Are you with me? Yes! yes! Barrett, I need 10 men to come with me. You others pick up the rest of the men at the herd. We'll meet you at the Camino Real crossing at noon. Oh, and um, nothing stolen. Not even a calf. Right. Here we go. Get all that brown. And here in the saddle. Hey. I'll need a wagon. I think a 20 should cover it. Barkley. Hold your fire. Don't shoot. This place is a powder keg. I'll kill you, Wallace. If I have to. Unless? I want those men back. Men are not given, Barkley. They're earned. Or stolen. <laughs> oh, Barkley. What a lot you've got to learn. Some people want to be stolen. Don't you know that? It relieves them of all responsibility for their impotence and weakness. Men are sheep, Barkley. These men are all sheep. Going willingly to the slaughter. Preferring it rather than facing their own inadequacy and failure. Well, and what are you? Take you, for example. What a curious place to make one stand. In a coffin. Think about it. Barkley? Barrett, Spark, you draw his fire. Shad, you come in from the east, the sun to your back. They'll keep him occupied. Take him through the door. Sir? And keep your fire high.
Get him back. Brown, Sir. Lillard, you two men, fan out. On my shot, take him. Take him? Head on. This is no good. It's only Rebs out there on that line. So it's yells and musket fire and up. Because it's never. Not once, not now. Not this one. Cloudy Ridge. Are they ever going to say that Wallen was stopped? So we take them. <laughs> then. It's letters to your sweethearts and your wives. And medals, boy. And whiskey from the officer's table. I always did that for you. You know that I did. So we take them now, boys. And then... yards, boys. That's all it is. Just ten more. After we do what we got to do here, I figure we can still make the cattle up that grade, Mr. Barkley. Not only water in that dry lake, but you are to see the trout, the size of your feet. Uh, is that with or without his boots on? You were saying about the steer. Yeah, listen, we got this lop horn. That crazy red. Well, anyway, all the way down, somebody always had to be hazing back to the herd. When we get to San Diego, wouldn't you know it? We couldn't get him on this farm. That's 
a mighty big cloud he's on in there. He did a mighty big job. And burst a big bubble. Yeah. Nick, there's always something tragic about a fallen idol. Because the tragedy, you see, is that it makes us wonder how we could have been so wrong. Worship idols, Nick. All do and must do. But never, never believe their light is brighter than your own. This ranch is yours, Nick. Yours to rule. So are the men. By your choice and your decisions. Well, now, you're quite a doctor, aren't you? Oh, I cured an ego or two in my day. <laughs> Fish as long as my foot. What? Keith, how long did you say that fish was? Boy, howdy, Nick, I tell you, as long as your arm. Cure that, doctor. <laughs>